come across something here extremely strange. I'm not really sure what to make of this. It's you know, we found a, an old trail here. We walked down the trail, and here hanging in this tree here, right underneath that pole, was what I thought was a, a barrel that was probably used as a martin box. Uh, what it turned out to be is an old milk can. And stranger yet, the lid was on it. I pulled the lid off of it. And look at this. What in the world? Why would anybody... That's a pine marten. It's all been skinned and stretched. This is a coyote. Looks like several coyotes. Not positive what that one is. Anyway, why in the world would anybody go through the trouble of, I'm sure, trapping these animals, skinning them, stretching them, fleshing them, and then stick them in a milk can and hang them on a tree and never come back. They've been here, looks like, quite a while. So, <laughs> I don't know what to think of this. Maybe he was planning to come back and never made it back. I don't know. This old milk can here that is, was hanging in this tree, it was right here. Like there's part of the wire it was hanging on. Had a coyote in it. Two marten that were loose. A fox with a marten that was stuffed inside of the fox. So, three marten, a fox, a coyote, and two badgers. They've been here a long time. They've turned green and moldy, but they're all stretched, fleshed, dried, ready for sale, stuffed into a milk can tied to a tree. In the middle of nowhere, we are, this spot here is probably, I'm guessing 25 miles from the closest town or house. I tell you, sometimes you run across some strange things in the woods. Hello, folks. So I've been, it's been a long time getting back to this video, a couple of years now. Um, a while back, I found a milk can wired to a tree that was full of animal furs and left behind. And they'd been there a long time. The there was a kind of a a green mold that come off of them when I pulled them out of the can, a real fine mist type mold. And the the way that the um, furs were put up was not the way they want them nowadays. Things change over time and some of the ways that you had them skin were years ago. And I got checking into it. This cabin here back Probably as far back as the 40s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, somewhere in there. Um, there was a guy that was trapping out of this cabin. And he had a couple others along the route that uh, Haley used. Uh, his name was Neil Allen. And I've also heard him called Cougar Allen. And looking that up, it's because the guy was actually attacked by a mountain lion. And I've been... Uh, Wanting to kind of have a follow-up video on this, but the, there's a lot to it. Depending on who you ask, he was found dead inside this cabin. Depending on who you ask, uh, it was ruled a suicide, but a lot of folks tell me that, no, he was murdered. Found shot to death in here. And I kind of wonder, because if you were going to shoot yourself... From what I heard, he had cancer. Uh, if you're going to shoot yourself, why would you hide your furs? I mean, why would you care if if you weren't going to be able to use them? Why would you care if somebody found them? 
from looking through old newspaper records, they're online now. Yeah, I can look them up pretty easy. Uh, there was another guy back here. I forget his name. I'll have to look that up again. But they didn't get along very well. And one of the people I talked to used to be sheriff here quite a few years ago. And he said that uh, these guys actually had a kind of a feud going. Almost a... Almost a, what is it, Hatfield-McCoy type of deal. They would actually shoot at each other from time to time. And <laughs> they didn't get along. From what I understand, Neil was not exactly what you would call a real likable guy. He uh, didn't have a lot of friends. And it makes you wonder. From what I've been able to find out from the newspaper records, I have not been able to find an actual date of when he died. But he, uh, the last newspaper record I could find was early 1970s, I think, 71, 72. I'll try to, try to find out more before I put this on. But <laughs> talking to people that knew him, uh, he was a prospector in the summer months and a uh, fur trapper in the winter months and he lived back here year round like I said he didn't have very many friends there was a few that would bring him up stuff as kids they'd bring him up canned goods and things uh, one of the local ranchers the lady she grew up back here and she said that he used to scare the stuffing out of her I guess they'd have a, a cow camp back here and uh, he would just kind of appear and nobody saw him come or leave, and she said it was pretty spooky. And uh, I guess he was known to be prospecting in the creek with no clothes on. And this is a lady, she says, growing up, she said that was kind of interesting. But the, from what I understand, it, it wasn't a pleasant sight. <laughs> There's a lot of neat history in this area. This guy, like I said, he could have been murdered. The... The one fella uh, was suspected of shooting a lady over a card game, and uh, he was kind of one of the prime suspects, but nothing was provable, and he was one of the guys back here. Another guy I talked to said that his dad knew him pretty well, and there was supposed to have been some gold hid up there also. It was under a tree, so I'm kind of wondering if it's the same tree I found the... Uh, can of furs under. I'm gonna have to come up here to the metal detector and look if it didn't get all burned up. On the original video I had on here, I think we called it a creepy find in the Idaho mountains or some such thing. We were kind of joking around about Bigfoot and whatnot, and it was meant to be a joke, but some folks kind of took that serious, and uh, you never know. I mean, I, I don't know that I believe in them, and I don't know that I don't believe in them, but uh, we did hear something once that was still got us kind of scratching our heads. It was a kind of a bark, growl, roar type of noise. Hard to explain. It was like all three sounds combined, and it was extremely loud and not very far away. There was a dead smell, and we looked around. We were deer hunting at the time, and bear season was open. Thought maybe it was a bear, and I never heard anything that loud before in the woods, but uh, we looked around and there was nothing there that was dead. So that's got me kind of still scratching my head, but I'm not ready to say it was Bigfoot. It, it could have been if there is such a thing, but I don't know. I don't know what it was. Maybe a grizzly bear. There has been a few in that area over the years, but they there's very few, not in this area. But uh, anyway, that was meant to be kind of a joke, but... You never know, there are some accounts of them in, around this part of Idaho, so who knows. Teddy Roosevelt, uh, look up the Teddy Roosevelt's Bowerman story. It was a fur trapper named Bowerman, and Teddy Roosevelt actually retold it. It's pretty interesting. It has to be right up between Gibbonsville and Wisdom, somewhere in there, which is not that far from here. And who knows, maybe... <laughs> Another guy I talked to told me that uh, there was actually a third person up here that was staying with Neil, and uh, 
he was just sort of a drifter. Nobody really knew who he was or where he came from. I don't think they knew his name even, but I guess he disappeared about the same time that he was found dead too. So that one makes you wonder too. That <laughs> I could say he wasn't a very likable guy. They might the guy might have just up and left because he'd had enough of his abuse, but uh, he could have killed him too. <laughs> it's hard to say. I mean. Like I said, from what I understand, it was either inside of this cabin or the double-walled cabin that burnt down here in this forest fire. And I think I still have some pictures of it someplace. If I do, I'll put that on here. I was told he used this cabin, that double-walled cabin, and then another one over on Pine Creek that... I don't know where that one is. It might be there still, it might not. But, interesting story anyhow. And I wish uh, now that those furs had been in a little bit better shape and I could have done something with them, now that I know some of the history behind them. Uh, but they'd been there since about 1970. So, 50 years in a milk can up in the weather year-round Idaho mountains that... They didn't fare so well. They weren't they weren't good for anything really. They were pretty rotten. But so that's the story. What is the truth? Was he a suicide or was he murdered? It's hard to know. We'll probably never find out for sure. But thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. So this book was given to Cindy from a friend of ours, uh, Sue Smith. She lives here and has grown up here her whole life. They used to, well, they still do run cattle back there in the this area. Uh, I haven't read this. It's mostly a story of her life, but from what Cindy says, it's a really good book. But uh, this is what she has to say about Neil Allen. It's pretty funny. Okay, so, like I say, she's, she's gathering cows. This is how the cattle got to the range in the spring. It was our job to move the cows to higher and higher pastures as the grass developed. We had a cow camp on Moose Creek, and many summers our fathers hired a writer to do the majority of the writing. Some of us kids would be designated the writer's helper and stayed in the mountains weeks at a time, helping move cattle daily. One day, Dave, Bruce, and I were living with the writer when we discovered that not far from our camp was an old miner living in Melhouse Meadow. There was still old miners living throughout the mountains, but this one held our attention because he did his mining in the nude. <laughs> our camp was located near a large eroded wash um, that had become that caused by a mining dispute. Uh, let's see. We found as we worked our way down the gorge and then climbed up the steep bank we could get a glimpse of the naked miner. Neil Allen was a miner and trapper that had a cabin not far from a camp. I was terrified of this man. He could, he could walk into camp without making a sound. At night, lit, sitting around the campfire, he would just appear. He would settle himself in with a cup of coffee and start telling petrifying stories about a mountain lion that jumped him or a bear that clawed his way into his cabin. On and on these stories went. It, we would finish his, co his coffee and disappear into the dark. Bruce and I would creep into the mining shack we used for housing and climb into our bags. Sure, we would not make it through the night. <laughs> this is the only picture I've been able to find of him. They, this was, says it was at the, the fairgrounds um, in 1970. And this guy here on this end... They had a, a beard contest. He had the longest beard. Not a very good picture, though. Okay, so 1957. Cougar attacks Neil Allen while working his mine. Of the favorite controversies talked back and forth between trappers and naturalists and other observers of wildlife is whether a cougar will attack a human. The experience of Neil Allen could and 
add some weight to the pro side of the argument. Allen was attacked Saturday by a three-year-old female cougar while he was mining near his place on the Moose Creek area. The report received Tuesday stated that the cat leaped from an eight-foot bank just as Allen turned and began to straighten up. He had time to grab his gun and was able to get off one shot, which hit the cat in the shoulder. The impact of the animal against Allen knocked the gun from his hand. Allen recovered from the surprise before the cougar and shot the cat to death. The report said the cougar was extremely scrawny, weighing only about 75 pounds, and that possibly explains the attack. Hunger. So that's why they were calling him Cougar Allen. I'd heard that, and I didn't, I didn't know why. Pretty neat. So our newspaper still does this. It's kind of neat. The early days of Lemhi County, it'll tell you, um, like 10 years ago, whoops, 20 years ago, and, and on down. Um, lately, they've been doing even uh, 120 years ago. But this one was in 1992. This is the earliest I can find any record of him. It says 60 years ago. Um, let's see. Neil Allen and family expected to spend the winter on Bear Gulch north of Leesburg. So that puts him there in 1932. Bear Gulch is not very far from where uh, that cabin is. Then in 1959, 10 years ago from that, be 1949, uh, search for Walter Pulp missing in the Moose Creek area since October 5th was concluded Tuesday night. Sheriff Bob Isley said today, Neil Allen and his tracking hounds who joined in the search almost since the start, will continue alone for another ten days at their crest of Mrs. Ada Pope, mother of the missing man. Never did find anything where it says they found him, though. So these digital newspapers make things kind of easy to look up, but it's really hard to read. That there is Finley Stroop. He's the guy that maybe did in Neil Allen if he w if he was murdered. As his closest neighbor is Neil Allen on the other side of the on the other side of the mountain on Moose Creek, twelve miles away. Sh Stroop said he didn't know he had a neighbor for many years. November 1st, 1962. Investigation continues in gunshot case. Investigation is continuing in the circumstances of the fatal shooting of Mercedes Lombardi, 34, October 21st at the Hilltop Mine near, near Gilmore. Charles Herdman, Lemhi County Prosecuting Attorney, says this morning that evidence has been sent to the FBI for analysis. Other investigation has included questioning of all persons directly or indirectly connected with the case. According to the coroner's inquest, on October 22nd, the deceased met her death from a gun in the hand or, par hand or party of parties unknown. She was shot through the abdomen with a three fifty seven Magnum pistol, according to information at the inquest. While in the Mayan cook shack with, with, with Finley Cowboy Stroop from Butte, William Moody from Butte and Lou Thorne from Nampa. The three were questioned as material witnesses in the case. Stroop is being held in the Lemhi County Jail on a charge of driving while intoxicated. So that one, I was told that uh, they never had evidence against him, but they were pretty sure that he was the guy that pulled the trigger on that gal that was in a card game. So, <laughs> if that's the case, and he was Neil's neighbor who didn't like him, makes you wonder. <laughs>